Okay, we've got a question here from one of our viewers. And this question says, I want to take retirement early. How do I lower my income to qualify for an Affordable Care Act health insurance subsidy? So I thank you for watching. My name is Richard with Wisdom Investor. And in the Affordable Care Act, depending on your income level, you can earn credits to help lower your premiums on your health insurance. We're going to answer that question here today. So I want to thank you for watching. We're first going to just review insurance in early retirement. Okay, here's the uh, options here for health insurance when you decide to retire early. And if you've been working at a job and you leave the job, you'll be offered the COBRA continuation plan. Uh, and that's usually fairly expensive once you leave a company. So that would be your first option if you're leaving a company, you've been employed. Uh, the second option, if you left a company and you're, you're going to take early retirement, you could take a look at your wife plan. If you have a spouse and your spouse has a plan, then you can take a look at their plan to see if you can be added. That may be, maybe a wife is going to retire or and they would look at their husband's situation. Uh, if that's not available, then you look at the public marketplace, otherwise known as Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. And we're going to take a look at this. And there's the option for private insurance. If you don't want to use any of the options we just listed, then there's health care sharing programs now. These can also be effective in reducing some of your health insurance costs. So let's just take a look at some of the basics here on how the Affordable Care Act works and far, as far as these uh, subsidies and credits. This is a uh, page from healthcarereformbeyondthebasics.org and a lot of numbers here but I'm going to make it really really simple here. All we're going to be concerned with is this left hand side column one two three four five six seven eight that's the number of people in the household that's really simple and then over here we have the limits, the maximum limits of income that you can make. So we have 48,560 down to 10,400 and the highest 169,520. So let's take the first number here, 48,560. If there's just one person in the family, in the household, income over 48,560, you would not qualify for any credit. So our goal here today is to find ways how we can get that income below 48,560 if you're one person in the household. For example, let's take if there's two people in the household, over 65,840, you would not qualify for a subsidy. A four-member family, 100,400 is the limit. Above that, you would not qualify for a subsidy or credits off of your premium. We're going to take a couple examples here and just look and see how this works. We're going to, our first example is with a four member household and a per person or families making $75,000. We're going to see what type of credits you would get in this particular situation. So here's the uh, situation. And uh, in this case, without any financial help, you'd be paying $2,000 per month, 2025 with the Affordable Care Act. Not really affordable at all, is it? The, uh, however, you do qualify for some subsidies, credits in this particular situation, which would total $1,411. Your costs for the silver plan would be $614. So that's how this works as far as getting credits. We're going to look at a, another income level here. At, if you're making over $100,400. Okay, in this next example, we're going to look at making 105000 with a four-member household. Let's take a look. Okay, in this case, the premium again is $2,025. The estimated financial help, because you're over the limit, you would not get any credits or the subsidy would not apply. You would pay the full 2025 I think this is where some people were not happy with the Affordable Care Act because it was supposed to be a drop in insurance, but for uh, families who are above the limits or above the threshold, they end up paying quite a bit more. Those who do qualify for the credits, it's 
quite uh, reasonable. Okay, so just some additional information too. In this previous example, this was a family with uh, two children. The, the husband and wife in this case were about 55 years old, children 14 and 16. I'm just using that as an example. And the insurance was based on getting it living in Dallas, Texas. Keep in mind, every state and every county is going to have a different amount that you pay. It, it can be quite different. So this is just a overall example for a uh, the medium cost area. We're going to look at now an area, say a two family, and you're earning fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so you're below the threshold, but let's just get an idea of what that would be. Okay, so here's a situation. Two adults about 55 years old, no children, just two two in the family. The total insurance is 1,493. The subsidy would be 1,082. And the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, yes, the subsidy would be 1,082 and your total cost for insurance would be $411. And we're gonna now look at a $66,000 household, two in the household and what their subsidy would be. So in this case, 1,493 for the insurance. There's no financial help in this case, no subsidy, no credits. They would pay the total 1,493 because they were over the maximum limits. So we're going to take a look at some ways of reducing the income level so that you can meet these limits and go below them. Okay, so look how do we uh, reduce the uh, income. Okay, here's the ways that you can do this. Uh, one would be to earn less. Of course, no one who wants to earn less, but to qualify for this, that's what you have to do. It's uh, earning less money. Next way would be to try to find some other tax deductions. Now, you may have to check with your uh, financial planner, your tax preparer to find some of these other deductions. The, um, some of the main ways though would be to do a IRA, traditional IRA that's tax deductible. A Roth does not count because that is tax deferred. Or you could uh, increase your limits on a, or contributions on a 401k. If you're self-employed, you can uh, do a SEP IRA. So you need to uh, do some things here to reduce the income and typically it's in the area of uh, IRAs and along those ways or reducing the income. A couple other ways is educator expenses. If you're a teacher, you can uh, use that to help lower some of your income and also student loan interest helps also. And then another way that we're going to also take a look at and give a, an example here in just a minute in a reducing income is using an HSA, Health Savings Account. Okay, so this is, if you have a qualified high deductible health plan, one of these plans that you're taking out with the Affordable Care Act is considered a qualified high deductible health plan. So it's going to have a high deductible bottom line. You can use a health savings account and this can be, uh, contributions to this can help lower your income. We'll give you an example of how it works, but the limits on this, your maximum amounts that you can do for one family member you can put away $3,500. A two family member, you can also put away $7,000. So these are some ways of reducing income. Now, our tax system has changed somewhat. We have that large standard deduction. A lot of folks are going to make that. So in most cases, mortgage interest, state taxes, charitable contributions, medical expense will not lower your income in this particular situation. Okay, so we're going to look at an example here, how we can put this all together and lower the income. We're going to use an example of a person making 80000 I say person, it's going to be a two-member household making 80000 So they're over the limits. Let's take a look at this. Uh, the insurance is 1493 There's no subsidy that would help lower that. You're going to pay a total of 1493 So how does this, uh, how can we lower this? Let's take a look at this. Here's our... $80,000 income. You can each contribute up to $6,000 each for an IRA. So if you did the maximum on that, that would be for the family $12,000. You can also contribute, as we said a minute ago, up to $7,000 for an HSA. 
And so if you add those two together, that would be 19,000. Subtract 19,000 from 80,000 gives you a adjusted growth, gross income of $61,000. By making those deductions, here's what we would end up with. Our insurance would be 1,493. Our subsidy and credits would be 992. You would only pay $500 versus the person who's making over 80,000 would be paying about almost $1,500 in insurance. That's $1,000 a month in savings on insurance, $12,000 per year in savings. So our question here today was, I want to take retirement early. How do I lower my income to qualify for the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare? And we looked at the examples of with the subsidy and without the subsidy. We talked about ways of reducing this by using the HSA and also your IRA. And uh, there's also an option for self-employment. You can set up a SEP if you're, if you're self-employed. So if you have any questions on this or comments, leave your comments. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you very much.